certainly these practices in the latest neuroscience of emotion and, and other, um, you know, um, modern research is showing that the kind of mind-body distinction is sort of an illusion. Like, you know, your posture affects your state of mind and your state of mind affects your posture, right? And it's true in, in many examples. Um, so that distinction is hard to square. So to me, like, the kind of like hunched over looking at your phone I mean, I think in some ways, like if you look at my body position, it's very similar to my state of mind when I'm like looking at my phone in this way. But I don't always have to look at my phone this way. So there's something kind of reciprocal about like the body is a manifestation of the mind and the mind is a manifestation of the body that in some ways when practicing how to have a healthy relationship with technology, the mod body might be a really interesting tool for that. Um, and I can give you a few examples. I mean, one is I use a standing desk where I stand and sit. And I absolutely notice that the way I interact with my technology is different when I'm standing and when I sit, right? When I'm standing, I'm a lot more open. I'm a lot more able to like kind of control my focus. It's a lot easier for me to like fall into a loop on my computer when I'm sitting, right? Another example is I physically place my technology in my home out of reach when I'm with my family. So I keep my phone in my office as a rule when I'm playing with my toddler. And the idea is, I, sh I, I can go check my phone whenever I want, but I'll have to bring a certain intention to it. I can't kind of do it on autopilot. And I'll have to kind of socially recognize, I'll have to be like, I'll be right back, and I'll have to go. And that like puts my body in the way of my mind falling prey to these loops. So there's a lot of little interaction points that can be kind of leveraged in this way. The other piece that I'll say about the way that the body manifests in our technology use that there are some experts on and I'm not one of them. It's actually like we're sitting all the time, we're sedentary, we're hunched over. There are real physiological implications of how we're spending our day. I'm not an expert on it in terms of research, but I certainly am an expert on terms of life. I've got back pain, I got shoulder pains, I just, and I'm forced by nature of my work to sit in a chair for eight plus hours a day. There's nothing really I can do about that. I've got the standing desk, but I mean, what else can I do? I try to take walking meetings, but I think a lot of us are in that situation where we have to find ways to stay active in the fundamentally a sedentary life. Yeah, fundamentally, I mean, it's certainly discovered in my own first person experience, but again, the science and thousands of years of meditation teachers can confirm that like our emotions live in our body and that I certainly have had those kind of strange mystifying experiences where, you know, I'm angry and I can like, in a mindful moment, thanks to this practice I've been doing of meditation, notice like the anger in my shoulders and then intentionally release my shoulders and find that I'm less angry. And then I've also noticed like kind of on a longer scale where, you know, I was meditating and there was a pain in my back that I didn't, I just assumed was like, I have back pain, but I came to an insight, like a really profound emotional insight on a retreat. And then I went for a walk and I would like for the first time in years didn't have this pain and was just sort of like, I just think I've just been holding that. I didn't even know I've just been holding this. And I don't really have the explanations for this. And I think the science is young on stuff like that, but that's kind of me more as a practitioner than a designer and a researcher, just curious about, is that something real? Is that something we can document? Because it's certainly something I experienced.